Hi, and welcome to the second lecture of the syntax module. Um, let's do a recap on what you saw in the last video. So we started talking about syntax where you identify different lexical categories that exist in uh, language, such as nouns, words, and adjectives. And then we put them together to form bigger sentence structures. And we started looking at the phrase structure rules of English. We started looking at what's a noun phrase in English, what's a sentence in English, how can we put together uh, different noun phrases and form bigger sentences in English. And today what we are going to do is just like we identified a noun phrase of English, which either could be just a noun or a determiner and a noun, an adjective and a noun, or a determiner, adjective, and a noun, we are going to see if we can form phrases with verbs as well. So here are some sentences, and um, these are sentences that can actually not be covered by just the two sentence rules that we have so far. That is, S goes to a noun phrase and a verb, and S goes to an NP, we, and an NP. So these sentences are the dog ran down, the dog ran down the hill, the dog chased the cat down, the dog chased the cat down the hill, etc. Whereas you can see you have things like prepositions such as down um, in all these sentences that appear after the main verb. And so what we need is we need all these different rules of English. And what we are trying to kind of find is a pattern with respect to the verbs of English. And so the pattern that we can find is you can have either just a verb by itself, you can have the verb and then a preposition combining with it, you can have a verb, a preposition, and a noun phrase, a verb and a noun phrase, a verb, a noun phrase, and a preposition, a verb, a noun phrase, a preposition, and an NP. Now, what we are going to do, just like we did with our noun phrase, is to combine all these things together and call this the verb phrase or the VP. And now we can write all these different phrase structure rules for what a VP is. You can say that the VP is just a V, the VP is a V and a P, etc., so on and so forth. And now what we can do is we can actually just reduce are the two different sentence rules, that is S goes to NP, we, and S goes to NP, we, and NP, to just one rule, because the we and the NP together is your VP, right? So now we can combine the sentence rule, uh, the two sentence rules into one. You can say that the sentence can be formed of an NP and a VP. S goes to NP, VP. So now we have one rule for noun phrases, NP goes to an optional D, an optional A, and an N. And you have your rule for your sentence, S goes to NP and VP, and then all these different rules for VP. And you know the, the direction in which I'm heading, I obviously want to reduce all the VP rules into one rule. And so just like we did for the noun phrases, what we are going to do is we are going to use the parenthetical notation that I introduced with noun phrases, and we're going to use the same notation to introduce optionality in the VP rule. So now what we can do is we can take the VP rule, the last VP rule that we have, VP goes to a verb, a noun phrase, a P, and an NP, and then introduce optionality in this. So what is obligatorily needed in the verb is, the verb phrase is the we, and so we is always obligatory, it's not optional. And then you can have everything else as optional. So you can have an optional NP in parentheses, an optional P in parentheses, and another optional NP in parentheses. And now what we can do is we can actually create um, complex uh, tree structures with this. So you can say, uh, for a sentence like Dave fell down, first what you do is you identify all the categories of the word. So Dave is a noun or a noun phrase. You have fell, which is a we, uh, and then down, which is a preposition. But crucially, what you have to identify within the constituency is that Dave is a noun phrase and then fell down is the VP, right? So think of this this way. A sentence is always a subject and a predicate, right? There are two things to a sentence of English, a subject and a predicate. The subject is very often the NP, right? And then the VP is a predicate. So fell down is part of the VP, and therefore you have the V and the P within the VP rule to create Dave fell down. 
I highly recommend, just like I did in the previous video, for you to practice these three structures um, by yourself in your notebook at home so that you get an idea of what we are talking about and the kind of tree structures that you're actually seeing on these lecture slides. You can also draw bigger tree structures. The cute cats like this food. That's a bigger tree structure. So now again, I want you to start top down uh, for these trees. You start by your first rule, which is S goes to NP and VP. And then you branch out your NP with your NP rule, which is an optional D, an optional A, and an N. And then your VP rule, which is VP goes to an obligatory V, an optional NP, a P, an optional P, and an optional NP. And then you get tree structures like this, cute cats like this dog. And then you can also create more complicated tree structures like the old man put broken cups into a wooden box, etc. And so this is a little bit more complicated. You start by doing the label bracketing, uh, identify all the categories of each of the words, identify the individual constituency uh, for each of these phrases, and then you start to draw the tree. I highly recommend you to draw all these tree structures at home so that you get some practice in drawing tree structures. So now that we have an intuitive understanding of what a noun phrase is and what a verb phrase is, I want to get into prepositional phrases. All right. So prepositional phrases can also appear inside noun phrases. So here are some examples. The boy in the yard jumped. The dog outside the fence barked. The dog outside barked, etc. So now you can see that your NP rule, which is just an optional uh, D, an optional A, and an N, is not going to work because when you look at the boy in the yard, the is a determiner, boy is a noun, in is a preposition, the is a determiner, and yard is another noun. So what you can see is after the noun, the boy, you have a preposition and another NP. So we want to change this into the NP has an optional D, an optional A, a noun, an optional P, and an optional NP. But what you can see is that, well, when you have a preposition like outside or down, etc., you can also have an NP after it. So you can say, the dog outside barked, with just a preposition, or you can say, the dog outside of the fence barked with the preposition as well as an NP following it. The same thing with the dog climbed down and the dog climbed down the tree. And so what we are going to do is we are going to call this preposition and the noun phrase following the preposition as a prepositional phrase, right? So the PP is what we're going to call it. And we can have uh, the rule, there are two things that can be part of a PP. The PP can just have a preposition or it can have a preposition and another noun phrase, just like this, right? The dog outside part is just the preposition, and the dog outside the fence part is the preposition along with a noun phrase, the fence. And just like we did with the NP rule and the VP rule, we can use your parenthetical notation to condense these two into one, so you can have PP goes to a P and an optional NP, right? So P and an optional NP. And this is your prepositional rule of English. So here are the four prepositional rules that we have right now. S goes to NPVP, that is S goes to a subject and a predicate. The NP goes to an optional D, optional A, an N, which is obligatory, and an optional PP following that N. The VP goes to a V, an optional NP, and an optional PP. And then the PP that can go down to a preposition and an optional NP. And now you can draw more complicated trees such as this. The boys in this class kicked the ball down the hall. And again, I, you have the answer in front of you, but I want you to do this on your own, in your notebook, at home, with respect to identifying the categories, identifying the prepositional phrases, noun phrases, word phrase, etc., and creating the tree top down. So here is a summary of what we have seen so far. Syntax is actually the study of the rules of sentence formation. And what we can see is that sentences are not just strings of words. They have complex internal structures.
right? And the syntactic category is the word category that the rule of syntax actually refers to. We can express these groupings with phrase structure rules for sentences, for noun phrases, for verb phrases, and for prepositional phrases. And we have a three-step rule for making uh, the mental lexic for, for making uh, the sentences by accessing the mental lexicon. We use a phrase structure rule to create the skeleton of the sentence. We find the words in the mental lexicon, and then we insert these words into the appropriate category label. So once you have reviewed all of this, and once you are comfortable in understanding what lexical categories is, uh, how do you identify lexical categories, how do you identify phrases within sentences, and how do you draw these, then we can move on to what we call a syntactic ambiguity, just like we talked about morphological ambiguity in the last module with cases such as unlockable that have two different ways of deriving uh, the morphology and therefore two different uh, meanings associated with it. I want you to consider the sentence, the boy saw the man with a telescope. And I'm going to tell you that this sentence is actually syntactically ambiguous and it has two different meanings. And I'm going to ask you to reflect on the sentence for a minute and try to identify the two different meanings associated with this and try to identify where this ambiguity is actually located. All right? So try to do this on your own before I move on to the next lecture slide. Okay. So the first structure is what we call the prepositional phrase within the VP. And this is because you can have your prepositional phrase attaching directly to the PP, as you can see. Uh, if you look on the right-hand side of the tree, you can see the PP is attaching to the VP. So the VP is branched into three ways. You have the verb, saw, you have the NP, the object, the man, and then you have the prepositional phrase, which is with the telescope. And that's attaching to the man. And therefore, the meaning that you get is that the the seeing was with the telescope, right? So the boy saw the man with the telescope. So who had the telescope? The boy had the telescope, right? And therefore, the boy looked through the telescope to see the man, right? So the seeing of the man was with the telescope. That's the first meaning. And the second meaning is that the man had the telescope. So the boy saw the man who was holding the telescope. So that's the second meaning uh, of the structure. And as you can see, the ambiguity is, lies in the syntactic position of the prepositional phrase. Where the prepositional phrase can attach to is going to give you the meaning difference. Here, as you can see, this is the structure that I call the prepositional phrase within the noun phrase. You can see the prepositional phrase is attaching to the noun phrase, the man, and therefore it is modifying the man to have the telescope. So the boy saw the man with the telescope. The second meaning of this is that the man had the telescope and the boy can see the man with his telescope, right? So two structures, PP within the VP, where the seeing was with the telescope, and the second structure, the PP in the NP, where the man has the telescope, right? Syntactic ambiguity. The ambiguity lies in whether you can attach your PP to your VP or whether you can attach your PP to your noun phrase. I highly recommend that you, uh, again, do these two tree structures on your own and you identify the morphological ambiguity and you see where the ambiguity is because your assignment, which is going to be due next week after I wrap up uh, the, link, the syntactic uh, module for this um, class, um, is going to be on, or on syntactic ambiguity. So here you can see that you have two different tree structures that you can draw because of the two different meanings, but what I'm going to be doing in your assignment is going to give you a sentence with five different meanings and five different tree structures, and I'm going to ask you to draw five different syntactic trees uh, for those uh, tree structures. So that's going to be your assignment next week. So if you are still confused with morphological ambig uh, sorry, syntactic ambiguity, uh, please try to, um, you know, Identify the meanings of these two, uh, of the sentence, the two meanings of the sentence on your own, and identify where that ambiguity uh, is located with respect to uh, the syntax. All right, so in this structure, the PP within the NP, the man has the telescope, and the boy um, sees the man who's holding the telescope. The difference in meaning, as we uh, call it, is attributed to the attachment site. 
either the PP, the prepositional phrase, can be attached to the verb phrase, or the PP can be attached to the NP. And therefore, that is really your syntactic rules and your syntactic position is giving you this ambiguity. So we call this a syntactic ambiguity. It is when an expression has multiple meanings because there are multiple ways of it to, of that sentence to be constructed uh, syntactically. And now you can see that uh, there's always a connection between uh, syntax and uh, the sentences. So when you say the boy saw the man with the telescope, uh, you have two different ways of combining uh, the sentence structure and therefore two different meanings associated with it. Uh, the boy saw the man by using a telescope, and the boy saw the man who was holding a telescope. And I want you to um, remember this dialogue from Wreck-It Ralph, if you've seen the movie. You hit a guy with glasses, right? The so same kind of ambiguity. Either the guy was wearing the glasses, or you hit the guy by using the glasses. So these are two different meanings, two different structures associated with it. So now you have an intuitive understanding of the four different phrase structure rules that we've seen. The one rule for sentence, S goes to NPVP, NP goes to an optional D, an optional A, an obligatory N, and an optional PP. The VP goes to an obligatory V, an optional NP, and an optional PP. And the PP goes to the P and an optional NP. Now, what we are going to do is we are going to introduce another uh, operation uh, to our rule notation, and this is called the star notation. All right, the star notation uh, in this case for syntactic rules does not mean ungrammatical, it just means as many of that category as you want. All right, so star notation within a rule is as many of that category as you want. Why do we have to introduce the star notation? The problem is with adjectives. We haven't really talked about adjectives, but this is the first time we're going to do so. In English, you can have multiple adjectives. You can say the nice cat, the nice old cat, the nice old fluffy cat, the nice old fluffy orange cat, etc., and so on, so forth, as many adjectives as you want. These are called a stacking of adjectives, and English allows these kind of stacking pretty regularly. So, how do we approach this problem? Because right now your uh, rule notation tells you that you can only have one adjective, right, within like the NP, um, et cetera. But with the star notation, you can say you can have as many adjectives as you want. So we can modify the rule to mean NP has an optional D, an optional A star, that's what we're going to call it, obligatory N, and an optional PP. And now what we can do is we can easily create multiple noun phrases with adjectives. So you can have an NP, like the nice, old, fluffy, orange cat, where you have the NP goes down to the determiner, the, and then all these multiple adjectives, and then the noun, right? So NP goes to a D, A, 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 and N. All right, so that's what uh, that's what I'm going to wrap up uh, this week. And then what we are going to do next week is we are going to add a little bit more complexity uh, to these four different rules. So before next week, it'll be good if you are completely thorough with the four different trace structure rules that we have and how to draw trees with them, because we're going to build on this in the next week.